All right, so I've been editing the Canvas starter application to hopefully simplify the, the overall startup of the app and the configuration of the application and to also deal with the issue where everybody has to run on different ngrok domains because once you've taken a domain, the next guy can't use that subdomain. So um, what I've done is set the projects up to use Foreman. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to use Foreman and how to use it with environments. So it's it's relatively simple. Uh, basically, you have this proc file.dev in the projects. And it's been there, uh, but we've never had it fully working and functional, and now it works. So to start any of the applications that are based on the Canvas starter application, all that you need to do is go to the command line and run Foreman start dash F proc file.dev. Now I realize that's longer than typing Rails server. However, given that we have to start up four different services to run these applications, it is shorter than opening four terminals, starting up all of these different um, applications, and also dealing with the different configurations. Configuration. And we did <laughs> Create a yeah, Rails script, script, script to uh, wrap that, like just bin start or something. Um, you can, or you could just type form and start. It's not that big of a deal. It's in procfile.dev. If you really don't want to type it, open the file and you can just copy and paste that line. Um, this is a really popular way to deal with Rails applications in development. Um, a lot of apps will tell you to just use. Uh, well, they'll give you instructions on starting the app, and they'll say, go run form and start and, and whatever else. Uh, by default, if you just run form and start, it'll actually read this proc file. But we use the proc file when you deploy to Heroku and other similar services, so you don't want to go messing around with the proc file because it can mess up your production deployment. Um, okay. So what this does then is you'll see that it's reading environ environment variables. So everyone will need to add a .env to their project. There's an example one that's provided, but the environment lets you specify whatever app subdomain you want to run in, whatever ports you want to use, and these are going to be specific to each developer. And the reason for this is that once this subdomain, like canvasstarterapp.ngrok.com, is taken, if I'm using that, then somebody else can't use that. So it means that only one developer can work on the project at a time. Uh, we've had that coded into the settings.js and the secrets uh, YML file, but this brings it into one spot. Um, and then it also helps us avoid the issue where settings.js is committed to the repository, and then we get conflicts as each uh, developer changes it, and then they forget and they commit that, and then somebody pulls it and it messes up their subdomain. So now all that you need to know is edit the .env file and then run um, foreman start dash f given it a file name with procfile.dev. Uh, one other thing to note is that you'll want to do gem install foreman. Foreman is not included in the gem file of the project and it's not supposed to be. They warn you not to do that. So don't add it to the gem file thinking that, oh, we'll fix it that way because that has some nasty side effects, apparently. Um, and also, you might have an old version of it on your machine. If you have an old version, then the node stuff will cause the startup of all of the services to terminate immediately. So make sure that you have the very latest version of Foreman. All right, any questions on this? Does this seem simpler, or does this seem more complex. I like it as I like it as um, um, Okay. So we're getting a lot of feedback for some reason. But um, again hopefully this simplifies everything. So anyone who is working on Canvas Starter app or a derivative of Canvas Starter app, make sure that when you pull the latest code, code. you take the env.example file and then change it 
take off the dot example. Can you run it and just show it to us? I'm sure it's oh. simple, but just if you see it. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. So I just come over here to Foreman Start. So you can see all the different ser services starting up. Um, and it outputs everything into one window, so it can be a lot of stuff. Um, if you do need to debug an individual service, so for example, if for whatever reason the Webpack dev server is not functioning correctly and you want to run no debug, you can still run everything just like we used to. Like This is just a simplification of the process. Uh, there are some defaults set so that if the environment variables can't be found, it will default to like local host, um, you know, some reasonable values. And if there, you have any uh, questions about it, I added, oops, added information to the readme file. Um, so here's how you start it with Foreman. You made a note that you need to have the latest version of Foreman. And if you want to do it without Foreman, here are the four commands. Or you can always find those in the procfile.dev. So again, it's really simple. Um, you can see how many windows, how many terminal tabs I keep open. And this was because this would be the Rails app, this would be the Webpack server, and then these were probably ngrok. I'd have two ngrok windows open. So this eliminates all those, and so now I just have one tab to run all this stuff. Okay, that's it. If you do have any questions or if you run into problems, let me know and I can help you get set up. I assume everyone knows what ngrok is at this point. Um, um, in case you don't, in case you don't, push that feedback. Push that feedback. So bad. Yeah. In case you don't know what ngrok is, it allows you to create a tunnel into your local development machine. So it's a service and it's an application. So you go out, you download it, you install it. You'll want to verify your account with them. That lets you use custom subdomains. Uh, once you've done that, then you can do, you can run stuff like this. So you can see I can run uh, ngrok subdomain canvas starter app. This is going to tell me. Oops, copy the terminal. Okay, so this starts up a tunnel into my canvas starter app, uh, which is not going to work because it's not running. But if I kill this one. Come over to here. Let's run the foreman. Well, oops. I want to run foreman start. Okay, so this is going to start up ngrok as part of all of the services that are getting started up. So I'll let that finish. Um, you can see right here, this is the output from ngrok. It's just a little easier to see when I'm not running it with foreman. Uh, it's forwarding this SSL. URL into my local server. So now, pull up a browser window. If I type that in, it hits my local application. And right now, you right guys, now, you, anyone could enter that URL and you would hit the server on my machine. So you could pull that up in a browser and, and it's public to the world. Okay, that's it. One, one, one other nice thing might be worth mentioning about Mbrock is, you can, I think it's localhost 4000 you can go to and you can watch the full content of all those requests that are getting routed through there. So that could be really nice. Have you ever, I've, I've not done there? that, but uh, let's try it out. Oh, it's 4040 right there. Yeah. So let's try it. It's really cool because you can see all the headers, you can see everything just. So, oh, it must use a bunch of different ports. Like I, I've got multiple projects running right now. So let's open up one of these guys. Um, so that's hitting one of my Webpack servers. But you can see now, here's all that. Everything you can see traversed. the headers go up and you can see the content all going back and forth. Yeah, so really cool that and helpful when you go to debug and you wonder why 
you know, why a certain response is giving you a certain code, you can come back in here and look at it. That's cool. So I think, you know, we, we've used other things, like this morning I was working with, with uh, uh, David on, uh, you know, the, being able to do with the multi-tenant where you have different subdomains pointing to the same app after they sign up. And we were using lvh.me, which someone has registered to point at local host, and it has a wildcard entry. So that makes it nice, right, uh, because you don't have to be adding to your Etsy hosts all these new domains you're adding. Uh, but the weakness, one weakness, is that it doesn't have SSL, at least as far as I know. Well, it, yeah. it doesn't, because you have to set it up on your local machine, which is, yeah. Ngrok does that for you. It doesn't actually set up SSL on your local machine, per se, but um, it lets it, you avoid... It solves that up. problem. Yeah, which is really useful when we start dealing with LTI applications, because Canvas requires that we... Um, serve up the LTI apps via SSL. Right, and that was the, that's basically the whole motivation why we started using NGROC is because these LTI apps required us sort of to be running SSL, and to do that on local host is is kind of involved. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Thanks, you guys. Talk to you later.